welcome to this episode of Race Space Spotlight. I'm Chris Murdoch. Our guest today, we have to go all the way out to Colorado to meet Colby Sokol. Colby, how are you doing tonight? Good. How about you, Chris? Oh, I'm doing just fine. The last time we had you on, I think it was about December of last year, you were getting ready to start uh, your micro sprint journey. You were making your way out of quarter midgets and getting into micro sprints. And you actually had some time on the dirt racing at the Tulsa shootout. So first, I kind of want to get to know what was it like going there and being able to race that and sort of get your get your mindset away from quarter midgets and, and get back on the or get on the dirt, I should say. Racing at the Tulsa shootout was awesome. It was so cool to race at a track where so many professional uh Midget drivers race like Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell, Alex Bowman, and so many more. And it was just so cool to race on a really track like that. The track was really fast, and it was also really cool to almost go there and almost win. I mean, it was a really, really fun experience for me, and I'm really excited when I go back there. Well, that's awesome. Well, you know, what has it been like transitioning out of that quarter midget world to the dirt and to micro sprints? Traveling from quarter midgets to micro sprints at first, it was a little hard to get used to, but when I, because I kept practicing before I went out to the Tulsa shootout, and that helped me a lot. Also, my simulator that I had, that helped me too. It just helped me get the feel of how to run dirt. And then after a couple races, I felt really comfortable. And I mean, we've almost, we've almost won races. We won a heat race at Port City, which was really cool, but I feel like we're going to have a, a win coming up really soon. And what have you learned so far from from switching to the dirt? How do you drive the cars? What's different? Well, you, pavement and dirt. I mean, pavement you're like nice and easy, and you don't you don't turn it. But on dirt, you just like sliding it, and you're using a really lot of throttle control, and that helps you a lot. Plus, corners you're turning left, now you're turning right, kind of. So it was like really, it was a, a little bit to get adjusting to that. But once I got to it, I was pretty good. And I learned how to, a lot of throttle control and how to really drive the car really good on the dirt. And I want to know, because you've kind of been in the race phase program for a little while now, and you've kind of moved up with fellow race phase driver, Cassidy Hines. What has that relation been like with Cassidy and getting to know them and, and being able to race with them, you know, through quarter midgets and now into micros? Yeah, we've raced just for each other with each other for a long time, and we just have a really good friendship. We talk to each other a lot at the racetrack, and we race each other on the racetrack. And I feel like we have a really good friendship, and I think that will last a long time. Friendships are, are, are really important, but also family is really important. Also, and you're going to get the opportunity to race with your brother Justice for the first time when you go up to Garden City in the micros. What does that mean to you to be able to, you know, take your family and, and be able to do something like this with your brother? We've, I mean, me and my brother have been racing with each other ever, ever since we started. And my family, my Nana and Papa have been following along with us. We've been all really tight bond when we come into these racetracks and we do really well and we work really well with each other. But seeing my brother race, it's really, it's really cool to see him progress and start getting better as he goes along, which is really cool for me because I know I've helped him and so has my family. So racing with him, for, but seeing my brother really cool to see what he has to show. And let's talk about some of your past races because looking at your schedule, you've made some races at Port City and you've actually had quite uh, a few good runs there. So what has, you know, racing at Port City been like? What that, What is that track like? Port City was awesome. The track was really good. And see, Colorado tracks, they're really big and they dry out really fast. And that causes uh, very spread out racing and there's not a lot of passing. But when I went down to Port City, it was a really small track. It got pretty, it got dry, but not as dry as tracks in Colorado like Calhoun. But when we were there, it was just passing lap after lap, side by side. It was the racing that I love to race all the time. And that's what I was used to in the court minutes. So going to Port City, that was really cool. And you also made your first non-wing sprint car uh, race debut a couple weeks ago. Uh, how did that race go? That race was really good. In the heat race, I started fifth and fin finished fifth. 
and then I went into the A main and started first and got the car a little sideways and spun out and got hit so I had to go to the back and then I raced my way back up to fourth and then there was a car spun out right in front of me and I had nowhere to go but in the side of him so then I had to go to the back again and then after that I raced my way up for a third place finish which was really cool what was it like driving from the back to the front so many different times? Was was it really cool? I mean, did it, did it give you a sense of pride? You know, what was that experience like? It was really cool racing to the back to the front and back to the front. It was really good because I felt I was able to learn different things with the car. There was it was there was really dry in one spot and then there was moisture on the bottom where I could get grip and I was able to find it was there was really get up there but. Learning, running a non-wing car is really different from a wing car because in a wing car you have the wing that gives you a little bit downforce which gives you grip but the wing car or the non-wing car you don't have that wing so you can't use the wing as much you got to find that grip on the racetrack which was I think I racing helped me with that and also just racing it in real life which is really cool and you know, I go ahead I said I, I would I like non-wing better than winged Plus, I was running Nama Street Dude, which was really cool. Yeah, that's going to be really cool. And talk about iRacing, because I think I saw, didn't you pick up your first 305 sprint car win on iRacing a, a couple days ago? Uh, how much time do you spend on iRacing? We, we spend pretty much every day down here. After school, we get down with our homework, we'll come down here to race. And I got my first sprint car win a year ago. I think it was yesterday. And I got another one yesterday it also was pretty cool but i racing has helped a lot it's helped me learn how to drive the car helped me find the moisture on the in the grip on the racetrack and there's so many different cars you can run on there it's it, it's helped me a lot and i like that and there's one more thing i sort of want to talk about that's sort of off the track that you you had actually today when we're recording this your national junior honors society reception was you, you just got back from that. What was it like? Because you're, you're a race car driver, but you're also doing a really good job at balan balancing school. So, so what's that like? That was really cool. I mean, it was really cool that they nominated me for that. Plus, actually getting in, which was really cool. There was 132 people nominated, and 32 people got in, which was, I was one of them. I was like, really cool. And also balancing school and racing, it was really good because whenever I go for a race or travel anywhere, I always make sure to take my homework with me and stay up to date on all the racing. I think that, that helped me a lot too with schoolwork. Well, that's awesome. School is, is so important and it, it's awesome that you're doing so well and doing so great that and balancing racing with school at the same time. Before we let you go, Colby, I, I do want to give you a chance to kind of thank the sponsors and, and who you need to thank to that help you get to the track, that, that help you at the track, and who's on the car, who, who helps you out? Well, I'd like to thank all my family, friends, and sponsors who've helped me throughout my whole entire career and even still today. I'd like to thank Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, Race Face, Rainbow Sprinkler, Matt Clark and Dusty Rhodes, Johnston Racing, A1 Custom Race Signs, EMI, Speedway Motors, John Randall, Frank Galusha, Roger McClessy, Burrell Battery, Lemission, Lanier, Springs Fastener, and my family, my Nano Papa, for always helping me out when they, when they could come to the racetrack with me. Well, Kobe, I appreciate you coming by and taking time to be on Race Face Spotlight. This was really fun, and uh, I can't wait to have you back again. Thank you, Chris. And that's Kobe Sokol, and this has been another Race Face Spotlight. If you've missed any of our Race Face Spotlights, you can catch up by going to raceface.tv on demand. As always, I'm Chris Murdoch. Thanks for watching.